Check, check. For $50 million. The Palm Beach fundraiser shattering Joe Biden's $25 million record haul. And he didn't need help from two other presidents and Lizzo. Just one uh, turn off Jesse on Fox News. I forgot to mute people. Sorry. Turn the politics off. All right, I got you guys muted. Sorry about that. Bobby, Rena, the regulars. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Let's see. <clears throat> Rudy, good to have you. Good to have you all. Uh, I think we're up and running. I think we're ready. I was supposed to do this tomorrow, but life happens. Things come up and Panada has to reschedule, which is all right. But we'll figure it out. Um, I got most of what I wanted to do in the lecture, in the pretty much everything in here. There's a couple things I changed to kind of keep it fresh for you all. Uh, but there's a few things out of place. But you know what? We're just going to wing it. But, uh, Rudy Day was good. Um, I took, in six and a half hours, I took three trades because that's all I needed. And that's all I really found that I liked. So that's that, but give it one or two more minutes. Uh, how's your day, Rudy? Anything good? Good, two green trades, love it, love to hear it. Well, we got 19 people, better than zero. Uh, the CEO, good to see you. Glad to have you here. Yep, 
Bobby Greed again, and we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. This is a, a small portfolio, I guess, headline or lecture, but I'm also going to dive into, you know, heavy emphasis on position sizing for you guys. And um, just look overall, you know, it can, it can um, relate to any stock, any portfolio size, stuff like that. So position sizing is going to be big tonight. Um, you know, we've done this, I think. I've been doing these small port classes since like November, once or twice a month. There's only so many ways I can teach it and give you guys motivation and show you guys trades I took. And I want to, you know, not focus on trades I took that were winners because I don't know if that helps anybody just showing people a winning trade. But focus heavily tonight on position sizing. Again, stocks to watch. If you guys want, we can go over that little small port challenge that I'm doing an update. Um, again, not because of the progress, but because of some things that changed since last time. And so hopefully it's just an eye-opening thing for you guys. Again, you know, the gains I post or show are in no way it's bragging. It's to show you, you know, when we put it all together, whether it's Sunday night market scan or Q&A with River, all that stuff, it's, it's putting all this work together that you guys do you guys pay for you know we have lectures four or five nights a week you guys are paying you know for alerts you're paying for education so you know the things i show you in the kind of psychological stuff is just it's legit to just give you guys confidence and to help you guys execute you know obviously we love all trading together but you know the goal you know for some of you is to hopefully trade on your own I'm not saying you won't need a ot someday but to be able to trade on your own is a really, really good feeling. And there's a lot of really good traders that trade some bigger names. There's a lot of good traders that trade stuff like this that I like to trade too that are in here that, you know, they're in lectures all the time. So with that, guys, we're going to get started. Um, as I kind of mentioned, uh, my name is Starth 1K in the Discord. I'm one of the support members um, tonight. Uh, building a small portfolio with heavy emphasis and focus on position sizing. Um, you know, why... You know, why these smaller stocks are fun to play, why they're less stressful, because um, you can buy some time. They're still relatively cheap. Uh, a little bit of charting, a little bit, um, two examples. Um, but again, these examples are based on position sizing and building a trading plan. Some motivation and then some, you know, hopefully some questions for you guys. Um, I don't know how long this is going to run because I added a few things. So I'm going to keep the chat open. Um, I will give you guys permission to unmute. Um, let's see. So if you guys have questions, just ask or type in the chat and I'll try and follow along best I can. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's dive into it guys. So, you know, portfolio size, you've seen this slide for me for several weeks now, or several months. When I say small port, um, you know, it can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but I know there's a lot of people in here with portfolios around the size, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. And some people flip it over and over and over. They go 1,000, 2,000, then they take out that 1,000, they keep flipping it. And there's also people that kind of have this dollar amount and they're still struggling. And so this and tonight, you know, like, you know, most of these lectures is really just to kind of show you guys how it's possible, how to got, how you guys to literally just take a deep breath and analyze the chart in front of you, analyze the setup in front of you, analyze what the, you know, the mods are calling out. You know, if, if Nano's in PayPal, it's like, well, he, he has a reason. And so, you know, don't just dive in to his alert or whoever's alert it is. It's like, check the chart, see, see if it fits your risk profile, see if you like the chart and agree with it. Or, you know, like I said, you guys have the right to ask you know, any green name that's in our Discord, say, hey, you alerted Tesla, or, hey, you alerted PayPal, what do you see in it, why, what's your stop loss, what's your what's your profit target zone? You know, you guys have the right to ask that. That is what you're paying for, you're paying for education. And again, it's it's education first with us, um, first and foremost. <clears throat> All right, this is the nitty gritty. Um, if you guys don't learn anything from this class tonight, 
this is all I want you guys to focus on. This is, this is like I said, what, you know, what makes you a winning trader. Um, position sizing and how to make these goals easy. Um, so again, we could do this with any dollar amount. I just picked two that I thought were kind of the happy medium for small, small herb portfolio based. But you hear flips talk about it. You hear other people talk about it. You know, try for one to three percent a day. Okay, you you hear that number, you hear that percent, but do you guys actually break it down? And so, what I want to go over with you guys um, is how we can just implement that and put that in front of you, and and really how easy it really can be if you guys just like make a trade plan and follow this very strict every single day, every trade. And you guys are going to watch your portfolio grow day after day, maybe not day after day. You know, there's red days possible, but week after week is the goal. So you have a $500 port. I want to do 3% a day. Okay. 1K, what is 3%? Well, it's $15. $15 is 3% of $500. Okay. So how do you size that? So like we always say, 10% position size max. Okay. 10%. It doesn't mean, so if you have, say you, you know, we're going to sidetrack a little bit. Say you have a $5,000 port. It doesn't mean you go 10% into Tesla. And, oh, there's a AMD alert, 10% in, in AMD and 10% in SPY they just called out. It doesn't mean that. It means 10% of your portfolio is in the market at any given time. So if you enter a Tesla alert and your 10% position size, you need to be diligent and you need to wait for that play to play out. Because if you're in Tesla calls, AMD calls, spy calls, and then we, we had that huge news drop like last week and you're in calls and you have no stop losses on, suddenly a 10% position size on all those is looking really, really bad in your portfolio. Okay, guys, so 10% total for everything that you're in. Okay, so 10%. A 500 is 50 bucks, meaning you are going to enter a trade at a $50 entry. And so that doesn't mean, you know, whatever 10% equals is based, that'll tell you how many contracts you can do. So, you know, 10% of 500, you're not going to get in a Tesla contract unless you're buying like a $250 call, which is way out of money and really stupid. And so stuff like this, you guys need to be realistic. Like I always say, Look at your portfolio, don't get FOMO, and play what you can afford, play what your risk tolerance is, because yeah, you can have $500 to play with, you can go all in or, or buy $400 worth of calls. But again, if that goes against you, you're gonna be hurting really, really bad, okay? So 10% of 500 is a $50 entry, okay? Now, how many times a day do we see 20% winners on the market? If you ask a guy like River, he's going to say 20, 30, 40 times a day. There's 20% winners all over the market on all different sectors on every different ticker. And so a 20% winner, again, on your, on your $50 position is 10 bucks. And remember, 3% a day is $15. Two of these trades on a 20% on a twenty winner, two of these trades, and you hit your goal or your quota, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever your goal is, you hit it. And you see how you guys have, you have proper position sizing. You can hit two trades and maybe you're up 45 bucks. You know, smart trader says you should probably just call it a day, you know, because you have a really good day. You're technically plus three days because if your quota is 15 bucks a day and you're up 45 bucks, that's basically three days of gains. That was your goal. Okay. And so, Two trades of just five hundred dollars, you still if you know if you still want to trade, you still have money left over. You know, there's people that say, "Oh, I'm, all, I'm out of buying power. I'm out of buying power." Well, you either traded too much, or maybe you scalped, or maybe it's your position sizing. So, if this is you, if this sounds like you that I'm, you know, that I'm saying, you know, look at your position sizing, get that in check. Uh, Gail, no, three percent, no. So, what people say. Okay, good question, Gail. So um, the S&P 500, so SPY, on average for a whole year. So if you were to put, I'll try and put it a different way. If you were to put $500, 
in SPY on January 1st of this year. Generally speaking, the S&P 500, so people have long-term long -term portfolios and Roth IRAs, whatever. If you put in $500 on January 1st, generally speaking, the S&P historically averages 12 to 18% a year. So again, you buy January 1st, you put in 500 bucks, December 31st, you wanna take out your money. Generally speaking, of course, there's huge bull runs, there's bad years, obviously, you know, during COVID we had a huge sell and then we reversed up. 2022, you know, we hit those October lows and we reversed up, but generally speaking, the S&P 500 will do 12%. So 12% of your return. And so to answer your question, Gail, is people have goals of profit per day. And so if you ever go to the gains tab, people are up 3%, 5%, people are up 27%, you know, the people are up 27% or 30% a day. It's one of two things. They're either full porting, you know, going all in on a trade, or they have a smaller portfolio and they hit a really good trade or they went just a little bit heavy again. And so that percentage of your portfolio is higher, but when you see guys have, you know, several, several hundred thousand dollar portfolios, you know, they don't say one to three percent a day, but if they do think about one or three percent a day on a hundred thousand dollar portfolio on two hundred thousand dollars. And so think about how big that number is. And so this is just perspective for you guys to think about when you when you say that number, when you throw that number out and you hear it in voice chats, like how doable this is. And I don't want to say you know, I want to throw the term out easy, but not sound cocky, but just give you perspective about how you can find these 20% winners every single day. So quickly moving on, uh, 3% on a $2,000 portfolio. So you guys know that I've joined this class with me before this. I have a $2,000 little port challenge I'm doing. Um, just to, again, give you guys perspective. 3% of $2,000 um, is 60 bucks. And obviously as this grows, you know, 3% of 3,000, 3% of 4,000, this number is going to get bigger. But, you know, tomorrow, if I open my portfolio and it's at $2,000, I say to myself, okay, if I want 3,000 or 3%, it's $60 profit on the day. For, for everything I take, my profit for the day is 60 bucks. So 10% entry of 2,000 is a $200 entry, position size 2,000 or 200, and a 20% winner from 200 is 40 bucks. Again, one or two of these and you hit it. Okay, you guys. Any questions on this? I know I'm kind of rambling fast, but I want to sell at home. Again, don't make it difficult. It is literally just a mental game. You against the market. Uh, who was it earlier? Bobby Green. Not calling you out, but everybody does it. How many times a day or a week do you not take the 20%? Think about that. Think about these goals here and think about how many times during the week you get 20%, but you want 50% or 100%. So you can post on Instagram or post it on, you know, our, our gains tab, which is fine. But if you guys are playing these position sizes, you only have one or two contracts, you need to take these base hits. I learned that from River, base hits, these 20 percenters. You guys need to take this every single time. Every time, and then look on Friday and look how big your portfolio has grown. You're like, wow, why did I fight this so long? Why, why did I struggle with this? Why was I so greedy? Like this adds up quick, you guys, very quick. Some names to trade. Um, you guys have seen this slide before. Uh, sometimes it changes. I did add, yeah, I wasn't quite ready for this lecture, but I did add, oh, there it is, Lyft. Let's talk with Tilly a little bit. Um, just to try and get some different sector names um, to play. And he suggested Lyft and Uber, which I really like. Um, just kind of different from everything else. You know, we got banks, we got travel, airlines, sports betting, um, Coke, Coca Cola, everybody knows that, Pfizer, PayPal. Um, you can write these down, you can screenshot them. Um, this lecture is being recorded. So um, it's, it's always going to be there. Um, but again, these names are nice because they're cheap, meaning they're premium, the entry. Um, you can buy stuff with two, three weeks time. And, you know, going back to our position size stuff, like, you know, you can buy 
DraftKings kind of expensive. PayPal's a little expensive sometimes. Um, you can buy stuff like Rivian, Disney, Delta Airlines with two, three weeks time. And with a reasonable strike, we'll try and go over that later. With a reasonable strike, you know, you can have a little bit of time. And if, if you have, buy three contracts, you sell two, and you're up really nice in the day on one, you can swing that one. And, you know, that's how you that's how you get those big winners. But to start out, you guys need to take those base hits. So again, why are those names safer? You know, they're slower moving. When I show you guys some charts, you're gonna say, wow, you know, that's a big move. But you look at the number on the chart, you know, they're like, oh, you know, Disney moved a lot. Well, Disney only moved 40 cents compared to like most spy candles are 40 to 50 cents or can be, you know what I mean? And so um, they're slower moving, they're safer, they're easier to manage. They're, they're not super volatile like Tesla, NVIDIA. Um, you can you can see a bull flag on something like Rivian or Disney and let it play out and just have the confidence of not having to stare at the screens and the trade so close because you know, your thousands of dollars in the trade and you're worried and it expires today or expires in one day. And so, you know, this is, this is the stuff you guys, if you guys are a beginner trader or a trader, you know, maybe just, you know, it's okay to admit it, but maybe you're nervous with your money on the line. Like this is how you can build confidence in your trades. You, you can, I'm telling you guys, when you take these trades and they hit and you hit back to back 15, 20, 25% trades, like you feel good. You know, I'm not saying you feel cocky, but you feel good on the setups you take and that your your thesis, you know, and that, that your trading setups work. And that's the whole point of playing these names is to build confidence. You know, like if you're new to trading, you shouldn't be trading SPX. You shouldn't be trading SPY, zero DTs on your own. You shouldn't be trading Tesla, you know, NVIDIA, AMD. Like they move fast and everybody wants to play it until it goes against them. And then you go, shit. You know, this little candle, I thought it wasn't much, but this little candle, I'm down 23%. You know, I'm down a couple hundred bucks. Like, what do I do? And then you're numb and you sit there and you don't want to sell and you don't want to accept the loss because that trading psychology kicks in and you don't want to lose money. Nobody wants to lose, lose money. But with proper position sizing, you know, and these slower movers, like you don't get the sweaty hands, the sweaty palms, like you can trust the trade. And so... You know, everybody wants to skip the steps of trading those big names because it's fun and you make a lot of money, but the day or two days or several trades, you don't do that. You're going to close those contracts for a huge loss. You're going to still stare at your portfolio. You're down 37% of the day on your port and you're going to wonder how the hell you got there. And so, you know, these names I'm going to show you and that I've, I've been showing you guys, like it, it really does work, but you got to have some discipline. Again, success will never come without a proper trading plan. And this is the second part of the slides that, you know, this is really what I, I want to sell home when I show you guys some trades that I took. Um, someone tell me in the chat, we've gone over this before, we've gone over a little bit tonight, but what should you include in a trading plan? Someone type it in the chat, please. Whoever is still with me and not scrolling on Instagram while we're doing a lecture. Entry and exit. Love it, Gail. Love that. Anybody else? There's um might be one or two more things I'm looking for. Anybody else? Entry, exit, profit target, stop loss. Love it. All right, you guys are catching on. Let's roll with it. Yeah, Raphael, being 25 bucks down a spy on your first thousand or so hurts. Yep. And really that's just, it just kicks your confidence in the dirt. You know, uh, Raphael, you, you take a trade or a person takes a trade, you know, at the, at the morning opening bell and they dive in they're like, Oh, this bear flag is going to play out. Like, like spy had a bear flag this morning, you know, but you know what? It bounced right on support and it probably smoked a lot of people. Um, but yeah. All right. Trading plan focus on the thing. Well, we're going to go over but focus on the three things in red. There's going to be a reason why. So every day you guys hear me say it, pre-market scan. I set alerts on top and bottom. I wait for them to trigger or I wait for some smart people that I trade with. Uh, Rena, yeah, I'm calling you out. Um, 
when someone, you know, says something in the chat or in a DM and says, Hey, I'm looking at this or, Hey, I'm watching this, you know what? I'm going to go to the chart and I'm going to look at the setup. I'm going to see, you know, if they're asking me about a question about a setup or if they're just mentioning, Hey, I, I like this setup. I'm going to chart it out. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to go to the 30 minute level one hour. And I'm going to say, Hey, does this work for me? Does it fit my risk plan? You know, if I'm already in two things already, you know, maybe I got to sit this one out, but you know, pre-market scan, charting the setup before anything, you know, if someone says, Hey, I, I want puts here on this. Well, okay. Where's your stop out? You know, where's your profit? Okay. So your stop loss is your risk. Your reward is your take profit. Is your risk smaller than your reward? And you hear people talk about this, but you guys literally have to sit there and ask. I ask myself sometimes out loud, I look at this and go, is this trade good? If I'm in puts and we push up, what is that percent loss versus what is my percent down profit? You guys literally have to do this because again, you guys will dive into a trade. You think spy is going to break out. You buy the top of a spy candle and then it comes down and you go, shit, I have no trade plan. I'm down 20 something percent on this contract. I don't know what to do. Do I just keep averaging more because I'm an idiot? No, you guys need to have a trade plan. Again, where are my profit zones at? For me, I like to have at least two zones, maybe more. And so zone one, is usually equals my risk, okay? So I know if I take profit on a trade, it is at least what I was willing to risk. And after that, zone two and three or whatever is after that, those better be double or triple or whatever it is that you're risking because that is, that is your reward. Literally, that is your reward from the market for finding a good trade. So reward zones need to be larger than your stop out point. And your stop out point... Need to be. Oh, Siri, I'm not talking to you. What are you doing? Oh, sorry about that. Siri is joining in. I'm going to say that again. I need to not say that word. <laughs> All right. Um, yep, she may lose my spot. Yeah, so your profit zones need to be larger than your than your risk. Okay, you hear people say, but it literally needs to be. You need to look at a chart and say, is my reward larger? Okay, so look at these three things. I make a plan pre-market scan. I chart out the setup, whether it's my own or the plan that someone gives me, and I execute the plan with confidence. Once I'm in, my plan is set. I am low stress because I position size properly, and this plan is set. Now I execute. Okay, let's look at how we execute. Walmart, trade recap. And before we think about making money, let's have a plan and let's take a look at how I made the plan. So 59.30, is this zone down here we're going to focus on, guys? We're going to come back to this. But again, everything I talk about here, let's put this all together. Okay, guys, I got two examples, so hang with me. All right. 606. Market opens at 630 for me. Sorry if you guys can't read this. I'll read it out loud if not. So my pre-market scan. This was last week. I said, top watch for me today. Disney, Lyft, Rivian, Walmart, you know, break and retest, multi-day possible support. Okay, this is my pre-market scan. This is my pre-market idea. But all these names were either on a multi-day support or a break and retest method that we that we talk about. Okay, so I typed this in. Someone said, what is your plan? I, I blurred their names out because I didn't ask them if I can use this. So, you know, deal with that. But so what is your, what is your plan with Walmart? A reclaim of 59.50. And I said, for me, a little 59.30 support is holding it lines up with support back to February. Okay, so I'm seeing a multi-day support. I'm building my plan. I'm building my trade plan. Not sure if or when we catch a nice trend day, but my plan is to buy calls off 59.30. No puts for me there until we start holding. Okay, so a lot of gibberish, but again, this is a trade plan literally right in front of you guys and literally what I typed out. Okay, and they said, yeah, I think we hold 59.30. Okay. So again, 59.30 is a support. We get we come down there, I am buying calls, okay? So literally, 59.30. This is the multi-day support that I was talking about that I was referring to. I bought calls. I knew my risk down here. So again, this is the option price chart of a 58 call. 
So we were at 5930. I knew that this move was not very big. So I didn't I didn't want the 60 because again, like I said, guys, this looks like a big move on the chart, like candles going up. This is only a 51 cent move, 51 cents of stock price move. So I didn't want a contract that that is this far from 60 to move, you know, because you have to look, look at the price down here if you guys can see this. Sorry if you can't. The contract price of the 60 strike was six dollars. Like I need a huge move to get to even think about getting profit. And so I bought an in the money contract. I bought a 58.3. It's a weird strike because of the split. So this green line here, I lined it up for you guys. I'm gonna get my stupid drawings here. This line here goes all the way across. So this is the the, the value of my call. So we push up and we come down, we push up and we come down. This is 59.30 right here. So I entered right here near the bottom, I entered at $1. three. So $103 per contract. And that is this right here is this, okay? So I knew if we break this support, the support I'm talking about, 59.30, you know, all this talk, multi-day support, not buying puts until that fails, yada, 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 all that. So I'm buying this knowing if we if we break down here, my risk is small. You guys find trades like this where it is so small that your risk and you're not even mad when you lose because your risk is small. Look at my stop loss here. I was willing to risk $6 on a $103 contract. Six, I was willing to risk a 6% downside move. I'm not risking a retrace and come all the way down here and take a 50% loss on the contract. I'm risking 6%, you guys. And this is my profit zone here, okay? So uh, I don't know if I talked about it. Let's see, support here. Yeah, basically support holding here, that 59.30 to 59.6-ish pocket. Um, I thought I talked somewhere about Yeah, okay. So 59.50, I noted was my level. But again, the trade plan, it's going to be tough. It's a little bit chop and markets are in dip mode. So if you're in calls and the markets are selling off, either Walmart is a really strong day or you need to be on alert that a breakout may not happen. And so I said, I'm buying down here. Again, I'm risking 6%. And I want to sell at 59.50. So 59.50 rolls around which is right in here, this pocket here. So I sold at 116. So, you know, not huge gains, 103 to 116. And then final target, I sold at 129 up in this zone here. Okay, obviously it went more, but the point to focus on and the point that matters is my trade plan, okay? I bought here, I said, I'm selling here. If we get to here, I said, I'm selling, it's not, Hold forever and just and and hope and pray. It's following your plan. You know, I made the I made the plan. I had a pre-market scan. And this this is no stress to me because I built the plan, we executed it just fine. And so um they're at a dollar nineteen if anyone took the idea. Um uh, 25%, yeah, 25% Walmart runner at 59.60. So again, you guys, it's not about the money, it's not about the setup, it's about Building a plan so there's no stress. Okay, Disney, the second one I wanna go over before I'm looking at the chat. We don't have a ton of questions, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but Disney, okay. Making a plan, here's the 30 minute chart. I'm gonna come back to that. I think these are in order. All right, trade plan, somebody said, I'm seeing Disney rejection on the 30 minute time frame. Rejection over and over. They are not in, just watching, just watching for now. Okay. So when they said that, I said, I like the risk here. Risk zone is red, which is a little high for one DTE. So this was a Thursday trade and I took a Friday expiration. You know, I said, and I'm thinking out loud in my mind, that's about a 20% risk. Market's weak, it could take it to 119.10, okay? So 
this red zone here, I know it's a small chart. So on the 30 minute chart, this person right here was looking at Disney and said, hey, I'm looking at the 30 minute time frame. There's all these rejections right here. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna pull up Disney because I like playing Disney. And you guys should too, because this pays really, really well. So if you've been in my lectures, you've seen my, my charts and the way I, I chart stuff. I drew this zone here and about somewhere in this time I entered, but I drew this zone here and I said, hey, if we hold or push over, this is the zone that I'm wrong in this zone here, okay? And why did I pick this zone? Because again, we sold down through that the day before, we pushed up and we're halfway through the day of the market and we cannot push through this zone here. We cannot push through here or here or here or this zone here. And so I said, you know what? This is my risk zone here. But I knew if we rejected, look at this. We have nothing here, you guys. We have one day of recent price action and four days of nothing here. It's not a gap. You know, this, this is a solid trend down. But we have all this information here. Like, we got a bunch of volume up here. We got all this stuff here. We got this stuff here. We got this stuff here. We don't have volume here on recent price action. So I knew, again, you guys see me draw my zones. That's my risk. And this this whole thing is my reward, you guys. Obviously, it doesn't always work that way. That is my reward. Again, keep your risk zone small and reward zone huge, okay? 30-minute chart, again, making a plan. So this is the five-minute. Push up, reject. Push up, reject. I got in somewhere around here. Again, I waited. I saw overall market weakness. And I said, I like it here. Again, red zone. We push. Okay, so pay attention to these numbers. Again, building the plan. 119.10. Or down here. 119.12, 119, and 119.73 if the plan works. Okay? So 119.2, 119.10. How do I pick this? Does anybody know why or how? So you always look left. You know, you see stuff like this, like sell into this, this is a level. 119 flat, look left. Sell into these previous zones. Like if you guys are not looking what happened the day before or the, or the morning, you know, what happened, like stuff is going to bounce and you're going to freak out and you're going to sell and you go, why did that bounce there? It's like, well, look left. Like it bounced this morning pocket here. That's how I find these levels is I'm in here. Here's my risk. Where are my top profit targets? Again. Two or three zones, one here, one here. And I said 118.73 because it's the morning low and it was yesterday's close. The morning low, the yesterday's close, 118.73. So again, I said quick gains here. Stops are now on. I, I entered at $44. I'm at 13%. Okay, let's follow along here. Taking a trim with the first price target, 119.2. Again, I set the alerts. Look, you can see the alert right there. It's probably small, but 119.2. There is no thing. When I'm in this trade, there's no thinking about it, okay? Your trade plan is set. You set the alert. Either your top side stop loss triggers or this one down here triggers, okay? Taking a trim, first price target. This really good trade for the people that took it. Target two hit, trim again, okay? Now I'm at 119. 119 somewhere down here sold at this zone and again 11873 if the plan plan worked out great this contract went 44 to 67 which is like 66 percent again it's not about the money it's not about the percent this is about a trade plan you guys um does anybody have any questions on the charting on the taking profit anything like that any questions in general? Set a stop cornbread. Good question. So, Siri, what the fuck are you doing? Sorry, man, my Siri, I don't know what's going on my phone, but it keeps popping up. All right, cornbread, uh, if you can see this, um, I, I will pull up, let me do this for you. All right. So on Weeble, I'm assuming you have that. You can look, this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but it's also one of my lecture topics. 
Um, let's see. All right, let's look at Disney Today, why not? Disney Today, yeah, that's not today, that's, is this a good example? Let's see, now, this will be a good example, but I mean, it's, it's the same for everything. So we're at 117.3. If you want the Disney 118 calls, so within Weeble, you have to click on anything other than the bid and the ask, okay? Because if you click on this, it's gonna pull up your option by order and you don't want that. So I always click on the mid. If you see this, I have the mid here. And this is linked. Um, this is a longer topic for another discussion another day. But um, this is linked one. There's a one here and a one up here. So watch when I click on the 118. It turns into the contract price. Okay. And so today, how I figure out my stop losses is you look at the time. So let's just say, okay, before this little breakout happened, for me, it's 930. We're going to look at this candle here at 930. So you go over to the option contract price, and at 9.30, draw a vertical line here. At 9.30, so this consolidation zone here is this pocket here of the value of your 118 strike call. So if you're like, hey, which I actually looked at this trade today, I was talking to someone else about it. Opening range low, we held support. This would have been a, a good low risk trade to try a bounce call. So at, at 9.30, the value of this 118 call, you could have got in at, we'll just say $91. And you could have set a stop loss based on this. So you could have seen this low here and said, hey, if I enter at 91 bucks, I'm gonna sell on this low here. You're risking probably a lot, but not that bad, 17%. So that's how you do it. You have to link, you have to link this. Send me a DM if you want help on this. I also have videos, but I don't want to run out of time tonight talking about this, but click on anything other than the bid and ask. So this is the 119, this is the 118, this is the 120. And your op and your and your chart will turn into it. And that's how I figure out my price. And so if I say, hey, we sold down to 116.82 of the stock of Disney, what is the value of my contract? And it was 76 bucks. So hopefully that answers your question. Definitely in DMs or another time, we can definitely go if you want to. Um, let's see, we just went over this, right? Yes, we did. All right. All right. Update for anybody following, for anybody interested. There is a teaching moment behind this. It's not about the dollar amount, I promise. So last time we looked at this, guys, I think this last trade, was in here was listed was either one is either this Walmart or this Walmart on 37. I cannot remember, but um, I want to go over something here. Um, what stands out to you guys as far as everything we went over a trading plan? I'm hinting it to everybody. You know what? What are some key things that stand out to you guys on? If you're like, you know what, I have a two thousand dollar port and I cannot grow it. Why is that? You know, you have to ask yourself that, but. What are you seeing here based on everything I went over tonight? Again, those turning examples were not the focus. The focus was, well, I guess I'll say it, position sizing. So a $2,000 portfolio, 2300 Total premium right here is that thing we talked about in the first slide when I said, you know, what is 10% position size? So 10% of 2300 is $230. If you look at this, I am way under... 10% entry, way under every single trade. Right here, $230 entry. I'm still under 10% because now my port is up to $29.50. Again, you guys, position sizing is key. Okay. You can be a good trader, but if your entries are shit and you're way over leveraged and your position size is bad, when you take, when you're in calls and you take a, a candle down, like that's where you have those big losses. Okay. And so, my focus is here, you guys. And again, for you guys who don't know, the number of contracts, you don't just get five contracts every time on anything just because. Your number of contracts are based on your position size and what you can get. So again, if if I need a $200 entry total premium and Disney is 100 bucks, I can buy two. 
if Disney's 50 bucks, I can buy four contracts. So your contracts are based on your position size. Okay. And Rena, yes, small losses. That's one thing. I'm glad you said that. that's one thing I want to go over here. Um, kind of went over it. Position sizing. Um, just went over that. Strict stop losses. So you see this when I take a loss. Um, hopefully it's easy to read on your guys' phone and screen. When I take a loss, I'm in three contracts and I sell three. It's not, oh, I'm going to take a loss on two and I'm going to hold that last one just because just because I can't accept the loss. No, I'm selling all three when I am wrong, okay? This so far was this, um, yeah. So last month, March into April, so far the biggest loss is 27 bucks. But again, um, what I'm showing you is it has a reason. So letting winners win. A couple of these, I think I can go back to the other screen. So let's see here. Letting winners win. Disney, 123 call right here. I entered two. I have to enter it this way because you can't trailing stop in here. So I entered three contracts at Disney, 123. I sold two. So I secured profit at 71 and I let a winner win. So I sold this last one here. So if you ever see like the same strike price, it means I was in. So I was in three total, two here. I sold two at 71 and one at 92. Uh, Walmart, letting winners win. I was in 12 of those. I sold, which that's not an example. That was a stop out most likely. Um, RBLX, five contracts. I sold four and I let a winner win. It wasn't much more. It was only six bucks, but still, that's how you guys stack gains. Uh, swing. Um I did. I'm not going to give it away for free because I paid for it. It's a small business owner on Etsy and I believe in small business. It is like 22 bucks, but send me a DM because I don't know what your discord name is and I will give you the link. I shared it about a month ago because people tend to like it. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give it away for free because it is someone's work, whether, you know, they're making thousands off this or not. It's not up to me, but um, I'm not going to give away if someone's work for free, but Again, you guys, the focus here, small losses, letting winners win, um, you know, and position sizing is key. Again, when you're losing trade and, you're, and your risk is small, you should not be sweating it out. All right, and this is just another recap. So this is from last month. I think this was the beginning of March, possibly. Um, I want to compare these side by side, again, as a learning tool for you guys. Um, Someone in the chat, focus on this here, this here. What stands out to you guys? Because I, again, this is learning tool. This is psychology. If you can read it, if not, let me know. I'm sorry, but um, stuff here. Is there anything that improved anything that, why am I profitable this month? Is there anything that stands out to you guys? If not, or if you're bored with this, I'll just tell you, but. Nobody? Okay. So a key thing to watch on anyone's trading journey, largest loss, $39. Update, largest loss. So I've not taken a larger loss since we did this update. So in the last 40 days, that was one thing that stood out to me after I did this lecture. I said, you know what? My average winning and losing in my largest loss you know, I need to get this down. You know, I need to get the, I need to not, you know, get a higher loss than this because this can really dip into some profits. And so that was one of my key goals here as, you know, kind of a teaching moment is I did not take a bigger loss. I was, I was quicker to sell when I was wrong and I kept my position sizes in check. Um, another thing, my average, my average loss went down slightly. My average win went up. Okay. Again, the whole point of this, you guys, is to be profitable. What's well, $100,000 portfolio, $1,000, is your winners have to be larger than your losers, and they have to be more often. You have to you have to be winning. You can have a low win rate. You know, you can have a 50% win rate. You know, I was down at a 63% win rate when we started this. But 
the reason I was profitable at the time is because my winners were larger and I was winning more than losing. Okay. And so again, we improved. I think I got a slide on it somewhere. And yeah, I still got drawings like an idiot. All right. We improved a little bit on the win. We improved on the winning percent. I thought I had this typed up. There we go. Okay, so the count's up 61% um, from 20%. And we're not 3,200 bucks, but again, my losses on the month are going down. Profit on the month is going up. So anybody that's struggling, you guys take notes. I'm telling you guys, keeping a trading journal will keep you humble because there's no lying about it. When the numbers are in front of you and you're struggling and you're like, man, my, my, my port is up, my port is down, my port's up, it's down. Putting this in front of you, it's going to be a gut check. And if you guys are still taking huge losses and small wins, like you'll never, you're never going to get ahead. Sorry to put it, but you're never going to get ahead. And so keeping a trading journal doesn't have to be this detailed. Like there's one that Zorro made that's free. You know, it's literally entry, exit, and position size. You know, it doesn't have all this stuff. Like, this is all automated when you type it in. It does this for you, which I like. But the whole point of the whole lecture and the whole thing, you guys, your winners have to be smaller. They must be smaller. Uh, would you suggest, um, Gail, do you mean focusing on one? Just, just you only trade two things? Or you mean be in two positions at once. Cause then that, then that kind of goes back to position sizing. Let me know what you mean, Gail. And I can help you out with that question. Um, but if it's, um, wait for being one or two at a time. Yeah, so you can be in one or two at a time, but again, your position size. So again, you, you need to have discipline. So if, We'll use a round number. If your portfolio is a thousand dollars, and we're saying you know ten percent in the market, if you're in Starbucks and your position size is ten percent, you know, I I can't make you not get into another trade that you may think looks better. But all I'm saying is if you do another ten percent on that other entry, say you're in Starbucks now, you want in Delta Airlines, and again, if you're in both those trades and they both go against you, now you're hurting, and so. You know, what that position size does is it builds discipline, you guys. Um, this morning, I was literally in, what was I in? I was in DraftKings this morning, and another member pointed something out. And so, luckily, you know, DraftKings was up, you know, so I'm kind of putting my foot in my mouth here. I got in another play, but I liked the risk-reward, and I liked where I was with DraftKings already, you know, when I took profit, Um I was in, yeah, I was in this draft king down here. And so I was already in good profit. And so that's why I took this MU trade idea from another member. But normally, you know, if, if I'm just getting in a trade and if I'm like 5% red, like I'm not going to jump anything else until I manage this position. Because again, if they both go against you, suddenly, you know, if you're, if your loss quota for the day, you know, they go both go against you, you're going to be hurting. Does anybody have any questions? Man, this lecture, this hour went fast. Anybody have anything? I'm gonna share the same thing I do all the time. Basically the same thing we always focus on at the end of my lectures, you guys, but um, you know, set some goals. Um, position sizing is key. Like I said, I've said about a hundred times a night, but this is doable, you guys. Like a thousand dollar port at the end of the year, you can, you can have 13 grand and only 50 bucks a day. And I've showed you guys how 50 bucks a day can be easy with the position sizing and your risk. Again, make your trades so dumbed down, so easy that when you're wrong, it's fine and you're, and you're not mad. Do not get into a trade where you take such a heavy loss. You say, man, I'm stupid. Why did I do that? And you just sit there and you're numb and you don't know how to recover. You know, it ruins your day. It ruins your work day, your social life, your family life. Like, you know, if you're, if you're trading, you're taking some big losses and you come home to your husband or wife, like you're probably going to be crabby and they're going to notice and they don't deserve that. And so if you guys really want to be good at trading, you know, it's, it's position sizing 
it's being picky with the trades. Like I said, today I took three trades. I took DraftKings, I took MU, and I took SPX at the last 10 minutes of the day. And that was it. You know, be picky with your trades. Have discipline. Um, but I promise you guys, you'll soon be profitable. Anybody have any questions? Anything at all? Um, is it better to swing when account is less risk strategy? Um, you know, swinging is tough. Um, you're going to swing and you're going to hit a trade and you're going to think you're invincible. And you're going to think you got figured out. And then you're going to swing some... 518 puts today and I don't know I'm just hypothetically and then we gap up tomorrow and you're gonna open the day and you're gonna start the day red then you go why did I swing and so for me I do not swing unless two things I have a bunch of time meaning like maybe three to four weeks or if say I was in four contracts and I sold three and the last one is still up a lot and if I open at break even or a loss on that last contract, I am still green overall in the trade. That's the only reason I swing trade because like you heard, heard me say, I like to be in control of my money. Like I want to sell when I'm wrong. You know, I don't want to be in that Walmart trade and swing and gap down on Walmart. And then it blows through my stop because, you know, you can put a limit sell, you know, on that, on that contract or, or a sell and you can gap down. And you're, you're going to be hurt in the morning. So I only swing, you know, when it makes sense to. Um, everybody's different, but definitely a small portfolio. Um, if you're swinging because you're on Robinhood and you think you have to have 25K, they switch that now, switch to a cash account. So swinging because of day trades is no longer an excuse, you guys. So don't use that excuse. I got to swing because I have no day trades. Um, do not do that. Um, but again, if you guys are struggling, like, honestly, you are paying a membership, you're paying for education, you're paying, you know, to make some money. And if you're not, and you cannot find your ground and the trade floor moves too fast, like seriously, send me a DM, anybody that's a yellow or green name, any of the support members, like just say, Hey, you know, I'm struggling with this. I can't get ahead. Or what is this? Like, and, and we will help you guys, but like, you guys have to ask for help. If you're just sitting on the sidelines and you're just lurking on trade floor and you just keep taking loss after loss based on what trade floor is saying or what someone else is saying, it's like, you know, put some work into it, you guys, and just send me a DM and like, I can help you. There's a lot of smart people in here that can help you guys, but you gotta, you gotta reach out for the help. Uh, yeah, Tesla, Tesla's fun until it's not, until you take a big loss on it, you know, you trade the open and it, it knifes down and then you're hurting, but um. Yeah, swing, like literally everything we just talked about. Yeah, start with everything less less volatile. I mean, this is recorded, but take a screenshot, whatever you want to do. Every single day, you guys, one of these will pay, I guarantee it. If one of these do not pay or a winning trade, I will Venmo somebody money. But every single day, I know PayPal paid today, Disney paid, DraftKings paid, I was in it. Dallas was a huge, I think, up day. Bank of America paid. I don't know about these. Like every single day, like, you know, this is energy. This is banks. If banks are flat, like trading sideways, look at energy. Energy might be moving. If this is flat, like look at look at Starbucks coffee. Like something is always making a move in the market. So when you're just staring at that spy sideways action. When you guys are staring at this for two and a half hours, getting pissed and getting in calls and getting wicks stopped only for it to push, getting puts only for it to get wicks. When you're at this, look around you guys, like there's stuff moving every single day in the market. You guys, you guys have to have patience. I think people are too fixated on just spy SPX because it's fun. Don't get me wrong, it is. But when you start seeing this for 30 minutes for an hour, just set some alerts, go for a walk, walk the dog, go get lunch, go trade something else, step away. Like there's no reason to sit in front of the screen for two hours waiting for a spy breakout. Google. 
Oh, yeah. Nice breakout above Friday's high. Oh, yeah. Google's a money money maker. Oh, swing. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, you're fine. That wasn't a dumb question at all. But um, yeah, again, write these down. Send me a DM if you miss it. But again, all these lectures are recorded. Um, yeah, does anybody have questions of what we went over? Clarification, any terms I use? Um, anything at all? I'm in no hurry, but I'll stay for the people if they need it. Anything at all? All right, you guys, I appreciate you all being here. Um, hopefully the people that were in here, 20 some of us, learned something new. Uh, we got CPI on Wednesday, PPI on Thursday. So tomorrow could very well be choppy. So trade with caution. And tomorrow, if you want to swing, be careful because you might open up to deep red or deep green on, on Wednesday pre-market when CPI comes out. So trade smart, you guys. Gail, you're welcome. Glad to have you all here. Uh, but let's have a good week, guys. Thanks.